to ensure that the brain can always keep the body running, it's the only organ to receive a constant supply of blood, even when we are relaxing on a night out. The main flow in the aorta sweeps on to supply the middle and lower parts of the body. This blood avoids the distracting side passages to the head and arms and carries on around the curve at the top of the aorta. Through this gradually narrowing tube, the blood continues its headlong journey, back behind the heart and down between the lungs. It reaches another major junction where a pair of wide arteries leads to the kidneys. Blood taking this diversion must pass through millions of microscopic filters, which clear out toxins and remove excess water. The wastes are flushed away as urine, down the yellow ureters, another part of the body's plumbing system. But arteries are more than mere tubes. Their strong walls are built from muscular layers. These muscles play an active role in controlling the blood's pressure and transporting it to the places where blood is most needed. Like a river running in reverse, large arteries branch into smaller and smaller tributaries. The smaller the artery, the more dramatically it can affect the blood flowing through. Specialized cells at junctions can direct the flow of blood. They change shape to open or close a connecting blood vessel. Even the tiniest of arteries can manipulate the blood cells streaming through. It may change their speed or even stop the flow completely. All these checks and balances give the blood circulation an enormous flexibility. The versatile arteries can dictate which cells receive favorable treatment. All arteries lead eventually to capillaries. A capillary is only 1 40th of an inch long, its entire length less than the width of a human hair. Capillaries are so narrow that red blood cells sometimes have to bend to squeeze through. This is where blood offloads its vital supplies of oxygen and food and picks up the cell's waste. Stripped of its oxygen and laden with carbon dioxide, the blood must now begin its long journey back to the heart and lungs. Capillaries drain into small veins, which join up to form larger vessels. A vein often lies next to a narrow artery running the other way. The two vessels carry the same amount of blood every second. But the dark vein must be wider. In the arteries, the blood travels fast, pushed along by the strong heartbeat. But it loses pressure in the narrow capillaries and moves more slowly in the veins. So, these vessels must be wider to keep up the same flow. The walls of the veins have no built-in muscles, but they can tap into the energy of their surroundings. Active leg muscles squeeze the blood along. Small valves in the veins prevent the blood from flowing back down again. These valves are more vital to humans than to most four-legged animals. When our ancestors took to standing up, 
the distance from foot to heart increased by 50%. The returning blood has to travel four and a half feet against gravity. As the major veins reach the middle of the body, they're no longer surrounded by busy muscles. But help now comes from the muscles we use to breathe. Running up below the lungs, the body's main vein is squeezed every time we breathe in. The expanding chest also lowers the pressure around the top of this vein, sucking blood up towards the heart. At any moment, 60% of our blood is in our veins, slowly making its way back to the heart. That's three times the amount of outgoing blood in the heart, arteries, and capillaries. 40 seconds after leaving the heart, the blood is back. It's now the turn of the other pump. The top chamber collects bluish blood from the two great veins running in from the body and from the head and blood from the heart's own network of small veins. In one beat, the blood rushes through a valve into the lower chamber. This valve has three flaps, but to prevent it from turning inside out, it too relies on the tug of the heartstrings. The lower chamber, the right ventricle, is the weaker of the heart's two pumps. Its muscles need to propel blood on a far shorter and easier journey, only as far as the lungs. The blood streams out for the last stage of its one minute circuit, through the lungs and back to the starting line in the left ventricle. On the way, it disgorges the carbon dioxide and takes on board fresh, life-giving oxygen. With this new supply of oxygen, the muscles are refreshed and ready to go again. The heart far outperforms any pump that humans have designed. It's self-regulating, self-repairing, and self-powered. And it's equally powerful as a symbol Throughout the ages, people have regarded the heart as the center of the human being. It's the universal emblem of courage, friendship, and love.